Hey everybody, this is The Sliders Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about my thoughts of wondering, is the WB just cursed? Is this set up for failure? Will it file for bankruptcy, similar to what Marvel had to do many years ago? Why can't they get their stuff together? And is it worth working for them, the emotional and physical toll? And was David Zaslav the devil that wears sunglasses was he the final like nail in the coffin for this studio seriously because you know they had money problems before which is why they had to sell things they had to get another company to come in and save them but this man's not saving nobody nobody like they're dropping so many of their shows so many episodes Ah, oh, I still can't believe what happened to the whole Batgirl thing in the directors. Like, seriously, they found the bad news out on the internet on that man's wedding day. So it's like every time there's an anniversary and like, you know, him and his wife are hanging out before he can clickety clack, he has to be reminded of the movie that once was that never got seen. And, you know, what kind of like wedding gift is that? Like, seriously, man. And now, because of David Zasloff and his 10-year plan and his so-called brilliant idea, his dictatorship, nothing can get approved until it's to his liking. Like, uh, I can't talk today. <laughs> liking. And he hired two other people to, like, approve, like, movie scripts and all this other crap. So if they don't like it, they have to go right back to the drawing board and do it again. And it's kind of like, what the world are they doing? This is dictatorship. Seriously. I get it. He wants perfection. There's no such thing as perfection. Look at Marvel. Even back in the beginning of the days, their movies weren't perfect, but they were amazing. And we loved them. And now look at Marvel. They're taking over the world along with Disney. <laughs> <laughs> the brainwashing people and stuff with the Disney Marvel baby humor and everything that is now influencing other movies that is not even a part of Disney and stuff and TV shows. And we see, I know what you're going to say. Well, you know, the emotional and physical toll of working for WB. Well, what about Marvel? They work their VFS people to death. That's true. And everything. Because here's the thing about Marvel. Have you ever heard any of their stars complain? No. And see, the thing is, the stars that do complain are stars that just aren't happy because of their egos and stuff. People like Natalie Portman, um, Michael Rourke, or whatever his name is. I'm trying to think. Um, Timmerman, whatever his name is, the, the Doctor Who dude. Um, somebody else, um, Hugo Weaving and everything. They complained about Marvel, but theirs were more personal than that of actually being in the movie. See, with Natalie Portman, she was upset because Patty Jenkins got fired from Thor 2 as director. So she decided, you know what, I ain't coming back. And then what happened years later? Nobody was banging down her door to be in movies and she came back and everything. As for the other three, they just didn't like their roles. They just thought they were beneath them. They thought like it didn't have no gravitas, nothing to sink their teeth into. So they left and everything. And they started trashing the movie. But other than that, all the other people that work for Marvel, you never hear them complain. I'm sure they do. I'm sure they have gripes. I'm sure they got hurt on set. But you never hear them complain because Marvel Disney pays them well and everything. And, you know, they have multi-movie deals and TV shows and cameos. So why are they going to mess that up? And for the most part, they probably are just enjoying themselves. Now, Scarlett Johansson is a different thing. They made her movie. They were going to put it on streaming instead of theaters. And she wasn't going to get paid as much money as it um, is in theaters. She wasn't going to get the good residual money she will get if it's on Disney+. Plus. Because I just found out. From a voice actress, she's furious and everything. She wants TV shows, especially animation, because she's a voice actress, to go back to DVD. Because she said 
she made a killing in residuals on DVD, but she's not making nothing like nickels and dimes on streaming sites and stuff. She said, same thing with music artists that have their music in like TV shows on streaming sites and everything. They don't get paid that much in residuals and neither do live action or voice actors and stuff. They get paid nickels and dimes and she's been a lot of them are pissed. They want to go back to the way things used to be broadcast TV and DVD. But all these streaming shows are screwing them over and everything. And us too, by the way. <laughs> Remember how it used to be cheap? Not no more. And so like, and of course the VFS people from Marvel, they're complaining cause they're getting treated like crap over there. They are literally, their heads about to explode. So when it comes to them, yeah, they complain. But other than that, you never really hear nobody complain that much. Um, even the directors, you know, once their movie doesn't do well and Marvel says get out, um, you will never really hear them complain because it's a business. If they complain, then of course they might not get movies made anymore. Uh, and some of these people don't deserve to have movies made anymore because they didn't do such a good job of directing. But when it comes to DC and Warner Brothers, people don't hold their tongue and everything. And it's like, why is that? And why does the WB screw so many people over? This goes all the way to like the WB, DC, the CW. There's always somebody complaining and somebody getting mad and stuff. Like the one thing that caused this video to get made, which I was going to make a couple of days ago, but I decided not to. But when I read that a bunch of movies again delayed until next year, I'm going to be an old man next year. All right. My young days are now over <laughs> and everything. And some of these movies were supposed to come out this freaking year. But David Zaslav, 10 year plan and everything, he wants perfection. He says he loves Aquaman too. He loves the Flash. He loves that uh, Black Adam. But he said they could be better. That right there was the sign for uh, Warner Brothers to pack their crap and run from that man because he wants perfection. And don't give me that crap of bad girl underperform and it was like bull crap. No, it got the same test scores as the other movies I just listed. But those are more on the scale of what he wants as big blockbuster movies, Avenger level type movies. And Batgirl was not that. Batgirl was more contained. What David Zasloff does not understand is that the whole Bat family is a self-contained unit. They don't do these big blockbustery like Avenger type level stuff unless they team with a group of superheroes like the Justice League, Young Justice, Teen Titans or something like that. And he does not understand that. And so now Aquaman 2 delayed till next year. Shazam, Black Adam delayed. And The Flash once again because of Ezra Miller being Ezra Miller is delayed again. And when it goes over to the side of the CW, we've heard the complaints. Ruby Rose has stated it was an unsafe working condition. She nearly broke her neck. It's so bad they had to alter her costume so she can have more like movement in the neck and everything. She's talked about how like she didn't get along with people on set, how she didn't get along with the showrunners, how one person kept coming in late and everything. And of course, here comes the CW and WB trying to dispute everything she says, but we know they're toxic and everything because of the whole Ray Fisher thing. I'll get in that later. And so like she literally said it was a toxic working environment and she did not want to be there no more. She left after one season of her show. And then not to mention so many people leave the CW, but the question really is why? Now they film in Canada and they work constantly and it's super cold in Canada. And you know, when it comes to them constantly working, cause they rarely have off times and everything. They work them to death. Their shows have became the, the Arrowverse became mediocre and a laughing meme at one point. And so they're busting their butt living in another country, freezing to death. And you know, it's not fair on them. Not to mention they miss out on other projects and everything, movies, TV shows, um, theater plays and everything. 
And, you know, because there's always been that long running rumor that Candace from The Flash, even before the last season was listed as the last season, she was supposed to have a huge reduced role because she just couldn't take it no more, supposedly, and everything. And, you know, then you got to stop and think about the Supergirl actress, Melissa Benoist. She left before the show had a... um was going to truly wrap up. They had to wrap things up early. And it's like, why? Why did she, why didn't she want to stay on her show? Um, who knows? Nobody really truly knows, but the main actress left. This is another, no, this is the third main star wanting to leave their Arrowverse show. And when she left, what happened? She got married, started a family. She ain't been back yet. And they're supposedly trying to get her back for like, um, I guess appearance, but so far, nobody's heard anything about that not to mention she had to constantly shoot everything in a skirt did i mention it's cold over there every other hero has pants but they wanted supergirl to be the most um had the most iconic um comic book representation um comments accurate like costume and she had to do that for like what was it five years in the freezing cold they didn't care about her and then they finally gave her pants like in the last two seasons and stuff and it's just like you know that on top of everybody clowning on her show and everything it's kind of like was it worth it for her to stay she got up and left and everything and then there was a rumor about the dude who plays arrow because he left he didn't want to stay no more and so they had to like kill his character off and everything and he was the main star of the show and not only that but i remember one season i think it was four they finally gave him a comic book accurate costume um, that looked similar to that of the comics where he had no sleeves then i think i heard a rumor that he was freezing his butt off and asked for sleeves again in the next season and everything and you know if he was allowed to have that how come melissa wasn't allowed to have pants early on and everything and then there's the whole brandon ralph they kept screwing him over time and time again the wb has he had a three picture Superman deal. Superman Return bombed because it was a mediocre crap of a movie that didn't really have nothing to do with like, you know, a good story. And it was just like a love story. The director we now know is a terrible person. And so they just let him go in there, I think. And then when they rebooted the entire thing, of course, he was not cast as Superman, but they brought him back to play the Adam in the Arrowverse. And he was doing that for a good long while. So everything was looking good. And they even allowed him to play Superman again, his version of it, in the Crisis crossover. But then when his wife came on board to be on the show, something happened. They left after the season after that. And supposedly it was a WB letting them go and everything. And it's like, why? Why did they not why did they fire him and his wife and everything? And so it just doesn't make sense. Why do they keep screwing over Brandon Ralph? He wasn't a bad Superman. He was pretty cool actually and everything. He looked like a lot of the older Superman and stuff. And I'm trying to think. Oh, not to mention. The racism that the dude who played Jimmy Olsen and Candace and everything who plays Iris had to suffer. They suffered for years on the Arrowverse, getting like all these toxic trolls coming at them and everything. And, you know, all because their character got race bent and the WB and the CW did nothing, nothing to try and like protect them. They didn't have their back. They didn't put out a state. I mean, there's not much you can do, but they could if they really wanted to like change the um, their comments um, and stuff on their social media accounts to where it will filter out certain like bad ones or like they could have somebody go in and just take out all the bad ones but then that would be going against people's free speech but other shows have literally done that i've noticed and they could at least put out a statement you know um saying that you know this is not acceptable and blah 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 blah, blah showing that they had their back instead of having them just go through all that you know because some backup support is sometimes what people need just to help them like push through you know what i'm saying and we still don't know the reason why the dude who played Jimmy Olsen, why he left. There's never been no confirmed reason. 
And then not to mention Black Lightning. What in the world happened on set that caused one of the lead actresses to literally have a meltdown on YouTube talking about how stressed she is and, and how her heart's just not in it and God has a new path for her. There's been rumors that the lead actor is not a very friendly person and stuff. And the show had to end and they had to recast her only for her to come back in the last episode. So that was kind of weird. Like first we had her through them other seasons. Then the last couple episodes is somebody new. And then the last episode is her again. That made literally no sense. So what the world is going on? Then there's Kid Flash. Why did he leave the Arrowverse? Like he said something about, I uh, forget some personal struggles and stressed out and all kind of stuff. And he wasn't the only person to do who played, um, Roy, the red arrow type dude, um, Arsenal. He left too. He was going through some bad demons of his own while working on set. And it's kind of like, you know, what is the stress level on, of working on that show that caused so many people to just get up and leave and everything? And then have you noticed once they left, they felt so much better. And then the dude, the two guys who played, um, what was this? Is it Firestar? No, 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 no. Ah, forget the the the, the dude. They it's the white dude and the black dude. They combine and they turn into that one fire type um superhero. But both those actors left for some reason, and it's weird. Like, why did they leave? They left, and everything. It wasn't the other way around. And the two actors, they still act and they do other stuff, just not for the CW or the Arrowverse. And they haven't came back. Then the dude who plays Toy Man, there's still suspicions as to why he was let go. Like he made some off the wall comment about the LGBT because somebody asked something like, do you think Supergirl's a lesbian or something like that? He says no. The next thing you know, his role started getting reduced more and more and more and to the point where they wrote him off. And it's just kind of like, what the world's going on over there? Seriously. And then they got the whole Justice League um drama that happened with the dceu with you know because the the warner bros weren't happy with Zack snyder's darker take on the dc universe so they tried to find a way to get rid of him but they couldn't figure out so they used a tragic event in his life to give him the heave ho and everything and lied and say he's friends with josh whedon and josh is gonna like take over and Zack snyder has said him and josh aren't even friends in real life so that was one lie they told. And then, so it's like, you know, the whole Ray Fisher thing. Like when Josh Whedon came on, he was so toxic in the environment and Ray Fisher exposed the crap out of him. And Josh put in this 90s type gag where somebody falls on top of like a woman and their face is either like in their boobs or something like that. So 90s, so 80s. And they had Ezra Miller do it until um, Gail Gadolf Wonder Woman. She didn't want to do it. And so they had to have a stunt double do that role for them. And Gail has had so many problems with Josh. And the WB just quietly like covered it up and everything, you know, until she finally had to expose it because Ray Fisher exposed them and everything. And... Then we get into Ezra Miller just being Ezra Miller and all those people that Ezra Miller terrorized and all of a sudden they're not pressing charges and stuff. And it's like money talks. <laughs> Is that why they're so broke? <laughs> and so, you know, it's like insane. Is it really worth working for the WB Discovery and just all whatever that company's calling themselves? If you make a project and David doesn't like it, it could possibly get canned and everything. People are working on shows that are getting canceled. People have been renewed. People have been greenlit and their stuff has like been shelved and everything. This man is crippling the WB and it's only been a couple of weeks. Ugh. Then I forgot about the um CW, the Superman and Lois show. The dude who plays Jonathan Kent. He quit. Like, why? 
there are rumors going around, a bunch of rumors, most of it has to do with mental illness. But then there are other rumors about vaccination and one by him. Um, and there's another one that I don't really want to get into because it sounds kind of stupid because he would know exactly what he would be getting himself into. But it is something about he doesn't want to play a bisexual character. And I have no idea if that's really true or not. It's just so much stuff still in the air and you know but for now it's just a mental illness reason as to why he doesn't want to work there no more and it's like what the world do they do to them over there when they over there you know how much do they push them why don't they give them more breaks why are they trying to pump out as many episodes as they can it just seems so toxic working for the WB. Like it really, 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 really does and stuff. And it's toxic no matter what network and what company you're with, but you always hear things about them. People are willing to expose them. People are willing to lose their careers just to expose this one company and no other company. So something is going on over there. Alrighty, well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.